Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing some updates for the player controller to make head bob as well as head sway and some proper recoil for the camera shake as well as just a little kick up on the rotation. This is just going to be some last minute changes to the camera to make everything a little bit better on the quality side before we move on back to AI next week. So we're going to go ahead and dive right into code as this will be a code heavy video. So first off we're going to reorganize all this. So we're going to move the nodes up here. And you'll also notice we went ahead and added a camera actual node. We're going to be breaking out the camera node and the actual camera itself as a container and the camera below that container. But we haven't gotten to that part yet. Next up, we need to go ahead and create a couple more ca export categories. We're going to create one for the animations. Then we're also going to create a export group as opposed to a category for the animation names. That way, it just kind of is like an expanding con collapsing form there. Then we're going to go ahead and set up our rotation variables into another export category. We also went ahead and added a vertical recoil here. This is the rotation vertically that the camera will rotate whenever we shoot. And of course, we are going to need an export category for the movement variables. Now up here, between the animation names and the rotation variables, we're going to go ahead and add in our camera shake variables. And I'm going to kind of do this pretty quickly. We'll get to actually using them later. But first off, we have our camera shake noise. This is going to be a noise texture, and we're going to pan through that using a panning speed all of this we've seen mostly before we're also going to go ahead and have a max power to make sure that we don't ever get too far away from the actual base route where the camera's supposed to be then we're going to have a blend speed that we're going to blend in and out of that animation as well as a return strength and that's how fast we subtract the noise and a noise strength which is the base level vibrations that we get essentially then we also want to go ahead and add in a falling bias a strength falling strength fall off and a falling max strength and these are just going to handle the camera shake whenever we're falling through the air and we land to give it a little bit of camera shake when we land. And then we're also going to add in one for jumping strength. And then just below that, we're going to handle all of the sway variables. Now the sway is going to be a little bit different than what actual human beings are. Human beings actually tend to step about 3.1 times per second, but for now we're just going to put it at five because it tends to work a little bit better. We're also going to set the max sway distance and that's how far to the left or right we're willing to go, as well as the max sway hands and camera height. This is going to be how high on the ends we're actually willing to get. Now, if we do negative then it will bounce in the middle and if we do positive it will dip in the middle then we're also going to have a blend speed and a bias for this as well the bias is going to be how fast we need to be walking in order to actually activate this at all now down here in the private variables we can go ahead and add a couple more private variables first off we're going to need an arms base position as well as a walking sway current value we're also going to need a camera shake position as well as a time since started, which we're going to use to pan through the noise effect and a last Y velocity, which the last Y velocity is just going to be used for jumping and falling. So first off in the ready function, we can go and set the arms base position to the arms node dot position. Then we're going to go on down here to the physics process and we're going to get started with the meat of things. We're going to go ahead and add to the time since started delta times camera shake not underscore noise panning speed this is just going to iterate a time variable. Next, we're going to check to see if the camera shake position's length is greater than a very small value. This is just going to make sure that we're not running this code unless necessary. And if it is, we're going to go ahead and create a noise, which we're going to be using the get noise 1D from the camera shake noise. And we're going to be punching in time since started and make sure to add something to it for the Y and Z variables. That way we don't get the same noise for each of the different vectors. Then we're going to multiply that by the noise strength and multiply that result by the camera shake position dot length divided by camera shake max power. This just means that as we get farther away from origin, we actually increase the noise power. Now, this might actually be something later on that we remove so that the camera shake is happening right up near the origin, but for now, this just works pretty good. Lastly, we're going to take the camera actual position and we're going to lerp it towards the camera shake position plus the noise function. So the noise function is what's giving us that little vibrations and then the camera shake position is like I kicked out to the right or I kicked out to the left or I bounced up, things like that. And then we're lerping based off of the delta multiplied by the camera shake blend speed. This way we blend our position into that position without just teleporting it. And then finally, after that, we're going to go ahead and make our camera shake position slowly lerp back to vector 3.0. So it's going to return to zero based off of time multiplied by the camera shake return speed. Now in the else function, we're just going to go ahead and set the camera actual position to vector 3.0 to make sure everything's returned back to baseline. Now, next up, we're going to go ahead and expand this is not on floor option. 
And if we're not on floor, we're going to go ahead and subtract from the walking sway delta multiplied by the walking sway blend speed. This is going to return the walking sway back down to zero fairly quickly, just so that when we jump up in the air, it doesn't teleport the hands back to the baseline. And instead, it smoothly blends them back to the baseline. Then we're also going to set our last Y velocity to the current velocity dot Y. That way we can reference our falling velocity whenever we stop falling. Next up, we're going to go ahead and create an else statement here. And within this else statement, we're going to go ahead and check to see if our last Y velocity is less than the negative of our camera shake falling bias. And then we're going to run off something called impulse camera. We haven't actually created that function yet. So let's go ahead and scroll down here to the bottom and create that function. Now the impulse camera function is not going to be too complicated. All it's going to do is take a vector three impulse position and a float impulse power. And it's going to set its camera shake position to the impulse vector multiplied by the impulse power. And then we're going to normalize it and multiply it by the minimum between the current length and the camera shape max power. And all that's going to do is make sure that we're always within a certain distance from the baseline. We don't ever exceed the max power as far as our distance. Now we can scroll back up here and this should function just fine. And you can see here we're passing in vector three dot down. So when we land, we scrunch the character downward some. And so in the velocity power, we're actually returning something from a smooth step function. Now the way smooth step functions work is essentially it takes the weight and then it blends between the from and two to return zero and one. So for example, say our last Y velocity is negative 7.5. So we're moving downwards at 7.5 meters per second. Then on the falling bias here, we have say five meters and on the camera's falling string fall off plus the falling bias, we had say 10 meters. So between five meters and 10 meters per second, it'll return zero to one. So if you have the last velocity of 7.5 meters, then the return will be 0.5. And then we can just go ahead and multiply that by the falling max strength so that that way we have a control for how much velocity we're actually adding. So we're just going to create a new if statement down here. And if we are currently on the floor and the velocity dot length is greater than the walking sway bias, then we go ahead and set the walking sway current value to the minimum between the walking sway current value plus delta multiplied by the walking sway blend speed. And we're going to max that off at one so that that way we blend into the walking sway. And if not, we're just going to do exactly like what we do when we're not on the floor and we're going to subtract from it. Now, following this, we can go ahead and set our last Y velocity to the current velocity dot Y, and we can get into the actual walking sway. Now, first off in the walking sway, we're going to need our step speed, which is going to just going to be float delta and multiplied by three. And then we're going to get our step bounce, which is going to be using an ease in and out function. Basically, it just smoothly blends back between start and end based off of the cosine of the value. And we just pass into the ease in and out sign, the beginning and end, which is negative one and one. And we pass in as the value, the time since started multiplied by the step speed multiplied by two and adding 0.2. I just kind of found that this was the vi most visually pleasing for me. Feel free to change this up as to whatever you like. And we multiply that by negative one just to invert it, multiplying that by the max sway hands height. And that's going to get us our up and down as we sway back and forth. Now, something I am going to add in here for later is just checking to see if the bounce currently equals the max sway bounce. That is going to be at the top of each step. We can go ahead and run our sound effects for the stepping noise, though right now we don't have any to actually implement. Now down here, we're also going to add in our camera shake position dot Y, and it's going to be exactly the same as step bounce. The only difference is we're going to be using the max sway camera height, and we're going to be multiplying it by if we are currently aiming 0.2. That's just going to make sure that anytime we're aiming down sights, the sway is not quite as bad as I found it was kind of hard to aim at anything without that. Now we can go ahead and set our gun effects hand offset position to our camera node basis multiplied by a new vector three. We're going to be doing another ease in and out sign. This is going to be the same as up here, but not multiplying by two or adding 0.2. The reason for that is so that it's offset. So it's opposite. So that the reason why we do that is so that it is opposite of the actual up and down. So we're swaying back and forth and going up and down, but we don't end up in a figure eight. This is how we prevent that. Then we're going to multiply that by the walking sway max distance, and we're going to set our Y to our current step bounce and our Z is just going to be zero as we aren't currently rotating left and right any. We're gonna multiply that by our walking sway current value. So that's between zero and one. So one, if we've been walking for a little while or zero if we're not, and we're gonna multiply that by if we're aiming 0.2. So that way we tone it all down if we're aiming. 
And the hands offset position doesn't currently exist. We're going to go to the weapons effect controller next, but for now, we'll just leave that as is. Speaking of which, we're going to go ahead and put an else statement and say, if we're not currently moving any, we're going to set the gun effects controller hand offset position to the vector 3.0. And now the last thing we need to do is go ahead and throw in one more impulse for whenever we jump using the camera shake jump speed. Now, just below the impulse camera, we are going to create a function that's going to be used by the weapons effects controller. And all it's going to do is impulse camera with recoil. It's going to set our target rotation.x added to vertical recoil. The target rotation.x is your actual mouse input. So by adding some to the x recoil, it's just going to vertically kick up the camera based off of our camera's rotation speed capabilities. And then we're just going to pass those same functions over to the impulse camera. This is going to be called from the weapons effects controller based off of a signal. So let's go ahead and hop over there and do that. So first off, right up here at the top, we're going to create a new signal. And in C sharp, you have to create those by flagging them as signals and then saying that they are a public delegate void with the event handler name at the end of whatever name you add to it. So on shot camera impulse is the name I chose. And then we pass in a vector three and a float for the impulse direction as well as the shot camera impulse power. To get that power, we're going to go ahead and create a new export right here for camera shake power. And it will just put it to 0.3 as that tends to work out pretty well. Next up, right up here at the top, right above a has round available, we're going to create a new vector three called hand offset position, which will be referenced in the player body controller. And down here, just below where we set the camera position for the aiming IK, we're going to go ahead and add to it the hand offset position, as well as doing that right below the right hand idle IK, as well as the left hand idle IK. Now, the last thing we have to do is right here at the top of fire revolver, go ahead and emit the signal for the on shot camera impulse. We're going to pass in the back vector of the barrel ray cast. So we're going to kick backwards and we're going to add in the camera shake of power as the impulse power. So we'll go ahead and save that and build. And if we hop back into Godot, we can go down here to the weapon effects controller, find the on shot camera impulse, and we're just going to select that and select the player body. And we've got the impulse camera with recoil. We also have the impulse camera here, but we're going to use the recoil one. And we'll go ahead and connect that. Make sure all of our variables are set properly. I went ahead and added a fast light noise light here. That should work just fine. You can see we now have our groupings a little bit more cleanly. A slight note from the editor here, which is also me, but regardless, I forgot to go over the fact that I did go ahead and break the camera down into a node just beneath it. They're both in the exact same location and rotation, but the player body's camera actual is referencing the camera 3D, where the camera node is referencing the camera container. I probably really should have named camera node differently, but you know, whatever. And back to the original recording. And everything looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and hit play and see how it feels. So as you can see, we can now jump and there's a good little kick every time we land. As we walk, we now sway back and forth. And it's a little bit exaggerated at the moment, but that might be something you need to tone down for your game in particular. And if we aim down sights, it also works, but it's a little bit slower. Now we might actually need to move down the movement speed whenever we're aiming down sights, but for the time being, this will be just fine. And when we fire, you can see it now kicks the camera back and it also kicks the camera up. And that's gonna do it for today. While this is a fairly small thing, it is surprisingly noticeable and adds a lot to the weight and feel of the game. So I'm pretty pleased with doing it. Next week, we're going to be getting back to AI spawning in the enemies and making them aggro to the player, as well as hopefully getting to actually making them damage the player and or die themselves. And we're going to be starting that little adventure next week. And I wanted to extend a special thanks to everyone for making it through the little bit of a drought the last couple weeks. I had some stuff going on and we got a little bit busy, but we're back on track now. And I wanted to thank everyone for sticking around. I hope you all have a wonderful week. We'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial.